Why is resilience so important in life and business? That's what we're talking about today on the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor, I'm joined with by Tove Evans, and he's a resilience thought leader. How good is that title, Tove? Thank you, mate. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Now, a resilience thought leader, what's involved there? Well, I guess going back to my story, I've gone through this crazy journey these past few years where I went through heavy depression and anxiety. Okay, yeah, right. That it caused me to go through eight months of grief, like really bad grief, and it was it was nasty. Like I went through self-infliction, I went through oh. hard drugs and alcohol, I went through medication, and it seemed like I needed a quick fix. How old are you again? 25, but this was all happening when I was 22. <laughs> no, no, I see that as a good thing. You got that all the way, all out of the way early? Yeah. <laughs> no, what a benefit. I mean, Keith Richards is still living that dream, you know? Yeah, exactly right. So <laughs> when I'm going through this this, uh, this adventure, I guess you'd call it, hmm. I thought these moments only happened to rock stars, so going back to the Keith Richards thing. Yeah, and yeah. It was, it was nasty, like, I didn't, I felt more alone than ever. Like, I'm traveling the world, you'd think this would be the most cherishable, like, times where I'd love the most, which I did. I did crazy shit from, like, dog sledding with, in, in Alaska to road tripping the East Coast oh, of America. Oh, okay, yeah. To being in Brazil for the World Cup. But there was a set of, like, a string of setbacks that put me back, and one thing led to another, and I just went into this deep, dark rabbit hole, and I was looking for coping mechanisms, and it, as guys, it's a little bit harder to open up. We have all this testosterone embedded in us. Yeah, sure. The shield of macho where you might be called pussy or gay or whatever, mm. when it's when really you're this volcano that's going to erupt yeah. and implode any minute. So it's probably better to be vulnerable and I guess in I guess divulge into emotions. So everything wasn't working and it was just getting bad. And metaphorically speaking, I was like in an uncontrollable car going off a cliff. Right, okay, yeah. That's yeah. what it was like. And I know a lot of people can resonate with this because some people don't want to open up, but they're like, okay, I, I know how this feels, that I decided to do something about it. And I, how I did it was I stopped everything. So I definitely stopped the pills because I was seeing doctors from around the world, from Toronto to Brisbane. Oh, you're getting prescribed by, by doc, medical doctors all over the world with... Yeah, um, and it wasn't just that. I was taking friends prescribed medication. And yeah. I was, that was not a good idea. Oh, okay. And uh, so everything was... It was just like a domino effect in the worst way possible. Yeah. That I stopped everything and symptoms like... With anxiety and depression, anxiety is when you care about everything, and depression yeah. is when you don't care about anything. Yeah. So it's yeah. this mental tug of war. It's like at school camp when you're against playing tug of war against two strong kids bigger than you. You're not going to win. Yeah. Um, so the pills would like kind of stabilize me from my anxiety, from the anxiety, but the depression would go through the roof, and vice versa. Or sometimes it'd just be a no go. Yeah. So and where did you find yourself on the back of that? So you sort of you you got off the pills and yeah. And then you found uh, a formula or something, you know, where you could overcome? Yeah. So I started researching why I wasn't happy, and it turned out that my health was obviously degraded. So I made that my number one priority, mm. and ev all the other pillars in life have fell into place from there. So when I, oh, from okay. a holistic approach, like, yeah. that was the number one core value. So my family and relationships and that has, like, really bonded well. Okay. My work Fabulous. life has vision and purpose, and I guess my overall gratitude and happiness has immensely grown because I'm so appreciative of what's happened. And mm. so I teach resilience to people and I actually do it in a practical sense where I put myself through stressful situations. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute because yeah. you go into some crazy shit, man. Yeah. I mean, what's this bloody Everest? What were you doing on Everest? Yeah, so I um, I did the world's highest ultra marathon from Mount Everest. And okay. It's a 62 kilometer ultra marathon. I and think. what, to up to base camp? Yeah, so I climbed a mountain while I was there too, in the Everest region. Yeah, okay. And then just, that was like the warm up, I guess you'd call it. And then we got to the start line, which is from Everest Base Camp. Oh, um, you started you started Base Camp? Yeah, so we had to, it takes, it takes two weeks to get to the start line. This is how, this is, I'll tell you how hectic this race is. One of the marathoners died in our lodge before we even started oh. from high altitude. So that changes the whole dynamic. Yeah, and everyone sure. on the team is freaking out, but 
we all had to realise that we were there for different reasons. Like, I was there for a charitable reason. We had the people there for professional reasons because they're sponsored. You had there for personal reasons because they're like, this is such a big goal. It's like in the top 10 most dangerous ultramarathons in the world because of the high altitude. And it takes two weeks to get there. Yeah. So everyone's on edge by the start line because they just want to be home because oh, it's, it's hard it, to breathe up there. Yeah, okay. So running down. Well, it's one of those things, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've heard Michael Groom speak yeah. years ago and I've, you know, I've read his book and it's like, it seems like the formula's like climb a mountain, someone died. Climbed a mountain with a group, someone died. You know, that seems yeah. to be the, the thing about it. But anyway, look, what, you've, since then, you've actually done a whole bunch of other crazy stuff. So, yeah. uh, you know, because what, what's this part of your, you, you go out looking for adversity or something? Yeah, pretty much. So I, I put myself in stretch, stressful situations to rewire my neural pathways. So it's a habit. Mm. Because when you come across a tough situation, oh, yeah. Yeah. it's fear versus trust. Mm. And... I'm getting to a stage where I'll just do it because I trust it now and, mm. the f- and fear is my best mate. Yeah. So when I came across, when I summited the mountain I was there for, um, we came across these crevasses, open crevasses, which are yeah. the main killers of climbers. Oh, yep. That yep. altitude. And we had these ladder crossings. I had about four or so. When I got there, my first thoughts, I got this, bro, because I've done enough fearful things in the last two, three years, whether it's like running for 24 hours around a 400-meter track. Mm. And or being locked in an altitude room for 48 hours. Oh, the, the pressure chamber thing, 48 yeah. hours. Yeah, so we're training 12 hours both days. Yeah. So on a treadmill for 12 hours, and then the next day doing Ironman distance. Oh, you were just sitting around watching Netflix or something like that inside a pressure chamber. No, you we're, were, actually... we're training 12 hours both days, and then after that we'd sleep and just chill in there. And then <laughs> it loses your mind, and we dedicated that to youth mental health because that's the event to make you lose your mind in particular, because yeah. you're glassed, you're confined, it went towards a university study, so you've got people at three in the morning waking us up, checking our blood oxys. You've got our blood pressure um, and everything from our well-being, mm. from a psychological standpoint. And that really took it out of me. Like by the end of it, I couldn't think probably. I couldn't even do basic addition because I'm just surpassed my mental glycogen. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah it really did take. Yeah, yeah it took a mental hit. I was burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> but you're here talking to us now, so obviously you, yes. we had a happy ending to that. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So let's get, let's get into it. So how does yes. that translate into the business? How do you see that that's important in life? So in yes. life, obviously, resilience is important. You, yeah. you know, overcome adversity. If you get good at that young like yourself, yes. you're setting yourself up for a pretty big life. Yeah, yeah I'll tell you something that um, may be quite surprising. So it doesn't matter if you're a high school student going through final exams or the teachers teaching the students or yourself. Yeah. That's entrepreneur, myself that's doing all this crazy endurance stuff and also an entrepreneur, or you're a 60 year old of a CEO of a massive thriving business, you're going to go through stress no matter what. It's inevitable. It's like saying pain is unavoidable. So once we realize that stress is, like once we realize that it's going to happen to us, you kind of accept it and then you actually grow from it. And oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I put myself, because I would never be where I am without, or even through, I went through all the crazy all the turmoil from three years ago, and I'd still be going through it right now, that I'm so grateful for it. And so that's one part of practical resilience that I teach. So you have to realize that adversity is a good thing. And it gets, it's quite hopeful because you're going through this egocentric paradigm of I'm having it so bad when really there's other people having it worse too. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it, it makes you feel, oh, I'm not alone. And then it puts you in the right mindset. Yeah. And you learn about discipline and reps and sets. Yeah. And goals, and you become a little bit obsessive. And then you become, when you're obsessive in something, you're the go to dude. Yeah, sure. And then you feel bulletproof. Literally, like I felt invincible crossing those ladder crossings. Like, no one's going to kill me now, dude. <laughs> then okay, later yeah. in life, which I've touched on, is gratitude. You're so grateful for what you've been through that it's actually your fastest way to change your definition of reality. When you practice gratitude, Mm. It, the world's going to, or the universe is going to reciprocate and mm. you're going to have opportunities where you never thought. Yeah. And when there's seven and a half billion people in this world and growing, you realize that everyone thinks differently. So you, if you think, oh, so John's going to think different to, to I. So if I actually imagine myself in his shoes, you've got perspective, which mm. subsequently becomes uh, empathy in a yeah, way. Yeah, you become empathetic, yeah. That's it. And that's what you need to be is not only as a leader, but as a person in this world. So you can understand that when you do these tough things, you realize that certain problems aren't problems anymore. Yeah. So like I did a 13 hour paddleboard over the weekend. Someone cuts me off in traffic. I'm too tired to even care, first of all. <laughs> then the second part is like, there's a reason why he did that. He probably didn't even mean to cut me off. Mm. So you, it teaches you about perspective in a way. Yeah. And that's quite important because in the business world, 
you're going to come across bad business deals. You're going to come across, you think you have the best idea and you've got this amazing plan and then shit hits the fan and you're like, oh no. And then, because everyone has a plan when things go right, but no one has a plan when things go wrong. Yeah. So that's when I come in to make you mentally unbreakable. So when the things go wrong, you've got your shit together and yeah. you're not going to freak out. And it, that stuff is very important, whether it's like a death in the family, a car crash, mm. Yeah, loss of job. Anything unexpected. Is and, and especially in the business world because... Oh, yeah, it's, look, as an Some people look at it like a dog-eat-dog -dog world, but in my opinion, it's more of a collaboration kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, you are saying. Yeah, no, so the thing about, about entrepreneurship and yes. business and that sort of thing is there's a perennial challenge around, yeah, getting on with the job and facing yeah. adversity. And I reached a point earlier this year, for instance, where yes. I got up every morning thinking, all right, I'm ready. What's going to yes. be the drama today, you know, and actually That's face it. the day mm. with that resilience you're yeah. talking about to a certain extent, where you actually, like, went out looking for trouble almost because you're it. now hardwired. Yes. You know, you now had this neural acuity and this yeah. and this pathway that actually sort of sought out trouble in a way, and that was that was a really valuable and it had a substantial change in, in mindset for me around yes. developing the business. So, so I'll so. give you something quite practical. So mm. they say I have it. It's now changed from 21 days. New mm. College London says it's 66 days, so just over two months. Mm. Do something every day for 66 days. It's going to be rusty at the start. Yeah. Just keep going. Be persistent with it. That It's like when you did these podcasts. You may have been a bit rusty. Now you'll be more confident. Oh, you, yeah, you just yeah. a bit used to it now. Uh, we're 15, 16 episodes in, and there I'm loving go. it. Yeah, absolutely. I was this morning with you coming in, brother. Nice. Right, that's for sure. Just do something fearful every day. And it, when I say fearful, like don't... Maybe don't jump off, of, do bungee jumping straight away. <laughs> Have a cold shower. Hmm. Like, that sounds quite scary. Just do, do it for two minutes. Just deal with it because yeah. it makes your day easier throughout the day. But I can do something. I've just done the toughest thing I could have done today. Now, when I go to network or when I go to have this business meeting, it's not that bad because I've just done something tough. Hmm. So when I was doing this 80K paddleboard training for it, I would be training with some of Australia's best paddleboarders because they're like, come train with us. Okay. My first thoughts are, um, what are they going to think of me? And... Oh, no. But <laughs> I just thought, what's the worst that can happen? So when you're in a tough mm. situation, so just simulate. That's, that sentence is so profound. Mm. What's the worst that can happen? Well, yeah. it makes you think of perspective. Well, I don't have to fire anyone today. Well, you may have to. But, or I'm not going to have to go to war today. Yeah. Or I don't have to get knee surgery or anything. So yeah. it's going to be fine. No, there's always going to be someone worse off. And this is one That's of my it. big yes. things is you, there's always this, that challenge in anything you do is that, you know, and I've become a big fan of the number zero. Because yes. that's where it always starts. Of course. You yeah. know, people say, oh, that Robbie Williams or something. Look at him on stage in front of 100,000 people. Hey, Robbie Williams started at zero. You know, that's he started it. singing in the chair or something like that. That's it. And, uh, and anything, in any endeavor, you're always going to start at that spot, you mm -hmm. know. So, and you build up the reps, yeah? Build up the reps. That's it. It's day in, day out. It's the reps and sets mentality that Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger has. And he had it in bodybuilding. He did it through his entire life, whether he was the governor. Um, that's the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, or bodybuilding, or even he was an entrepreneur in real estate. Mm. He would have this reps and sets mentality to just really hone on that skill so he can get really good at it. Yeah, wow. And that's yeah. where habits come in. And, yeah. Yeah, and then that it becomes, it becomes hardwired that it doesn't feel like work anymore. Mm. That's when you know it's right. Yeah. When fear is your best mate. Yeah. No, that's it. So that, no, there's some really valuable stuff in there. And I know that, yeah, and as we all grow and change, it's like we all become more resilient. Or that's what we need to be in yeah. business and in life if you're going to Absolutely. get ahead and get, get, get where you want to go. That's it. So yeah. challenge yourself, yeah? Absolutely, man. All right, cool. All right, we'll wrap up on that because we're trying to cut it inside 10 minutes. I don't know how we went with that. But um, now, um, what are you looking for? What, who are you trying to connect with at the moment? Yeah, sure. So I'm doing a lot of keynote speaking, so I'm, I'm really trying to get more because I believe what I'm kind of advocating here is quite practical for a lot of people, especially a lot of people that don't want to open up mm. and a lot of people that are going through stress that they got to realize that it is a good thing and mm. it's going to be almost their greatest tool. Yeah, no, I can see how that's going to be yes. valuable, so, you know, for you to speak to groups and that sort of thing, given that you, even your stories and what you've achieved in, yeah. you know, at your young age, it's fabulous, yeah? Now, how do people contact you? Yeah, so I'm available on toef.evans on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. And even LinkedIn, too. So now, let's spell that for people, T-O... T-O-F-E. F-E, full stop. Full stop, Evans. Evans. V A N S. Okay. Yeah. Right. And that's on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Probably LinkedIn, find you on there as well for sure. Yeah, sure. All right. Fabulous, Toph. That's an absolute fantastic interview. Appreciate your time coming no, today. Thank you, mate. Yeah, no, that's good. All right. That's another episode done at the East Central Business Show. I'm John Naylor, and we'll speak to you next time. 
Thank you very much for watching another episode of the eCentral Business Show. What we're looking to do across the eCentral Business Show is bring to you the very best content from great people with really informative knowledge to share. It's something that you can listen to in the car. Don't watch it, obviously, when you're doing that, but we're looking to really bring value to you across LinkedIn, YouTube, podcastable content. So it's really great and informative business knowledge. So please tune in as much as you can. Now, the great ways to follow us, you can register on the database, make contact with us, and we'll put your email in. We're going to tell you each month what great videos will come out and, and just give you a curated version through the eCentral magazine where we're going to send you the most popular videos for the for the month. The other thing we can do is uh, obviously invite you to connect with us on LinkedIn, uh, linked up with myself, John Naylor. And the other thing, of course, is look up John Naylor on YouTube and subscribe to our channel there.